My name is Jim Fister. I am lead strategist and director of business development for Intel's data center group, and I focus on uh, data analytics and Internet of Things. Fantastic. Now, the data center group, can you tell me a little bit about this? Is this an AWS type service? So Intel's data center group is actually a product organization. We make the uh, microprocessors, chipsets, network components, uh, communications components, uh, and all the uh, system architectures that power the cloud, power the data center, uh, that basically make your life happen on the internet. Well, Intel is the largest supplier of uh, technology to the cloud, uh, to the data center, uh, to any back office application, to any server application, and we own a significant portion of the market, and we continue to deliver relentless innovation along the path of Moore's Law to the, to the industry. It's great that you can work with a company like Intel as the industry because we will deliver innovation on a consistent pace every year. Every new cycle we're introducing new technology and that means new performance, new features, new capabilities to power the data center, to power the cloud, to power your back office applications, to power anything that you want to do to be able to make and drive decisions for your company or for your consumer. Can you tell me what kind of opportunities is the Internet of Things creating? The Internet of Things is amazing. And it's not as much something new. It's really an extension of all the things that people have been able to do and people want to do. You know, the way I characterize it is uh, you almost look 10 years ago and uh, actually even go back a little farther. You look 15 years ago. And uh, I remember actually sitting in a meeting and uh, I was said to my executives, hey, this internet thing's really interesting. I envision a future where at the end of a television commercial, they're gonna have a website there. And the, the executive looked at me, the executive to be unnamed, we'll say, uh, looked at me and said, that's crazy. Why would anybody ever put some dumb internet address at the end of a television commercial? They're there to watch television. Look at how fast the world changes. I mean, that's the amazing thing. So you look 10 years ago, and there wasn't a CEO in the universe that wasn't wandering around going, what's my internet strategy? I need an internet strategy. I need to monetize this internet thing. If I look at it today, um, I think people are just starting to look at all the opportunities that they've had with the internet, with, uh, with mobile internet, with cell phones, tablets, starting to monetize the application stores. It's going to be uh, very soon now, probably within the next five years, where you're going to see CEOs running around the office going, what's my Internet of Things strategy? I need to understand how to monetize this. And this is, I think, the huge opportunity for people. It's getting in and starting to understand what can they do with the Internet of Things. I think it's everything and everywhere soon, and people need to understand how they're going to recognize, monetize, and capitalize on the opportunity. I remember in the early days of the internet, uh, there was uh, kind of an expression, we'll know that the internet has come of age when you drop the word online. Online commerce, online trading, online this. <clears throat> what event do you think would have to happen similarly in the internet of things for it to come of age? Uh, I think one way to know that the internet of things uh, has come of age is we'll stop calling it the internet of things. Um, we'll just call it the internet. Uh, um, what's the best way to think about it? When I, when I look at the internet of things and uh, I see opportunities, people are putting devices in the home. People are putting devices in the office. And in fact, there's plenty of devices in the office and a lot of them are connected. Um, I've seen statistics uh, or comments. I think Cisco was the, one of the first ones to say that 99% uh, percent of the uh, devices that will be connected to the internet are not yet connected to the internet. 
But there's already devices that are out there that are connected. Uh, you see conference rooms with motion sensors and we're uh, looking at those motion sensors to determine, oh, is that conference room occupied? Because then I can turn off the heat uh, or the air conditioning. Um, I can actually put it into my conference room scheduler that that room is unoccupied in case somebody needs to use it. So it's not that I'm putting in a sensor and it's only being used for one thing. I, we probably put the sensor in there to turn off the lights. Now all of a sudden it's controlling the air conditioning, it's part of the conference room scheduling. It's not about sensors per decision. I'm not putting five sensors into a room and then saying, well, I'm gonna make a single decision off of it. What I'm, what I'm doing is I'm actually putting a sensor in the room and I'm saying, I can use it for one, I can use it for two, I can use it for three. At Intel, we have the concept of a gateway, and uh, IBM uses it as well. And it's basically something that aggregates sensors, makes decisions, and then passes that on, usually to the data center or to a communications portal. So when we look at it, we don't think of it in terms of sensors per gateway. We think of it in terms of gateways per sensor. I talked about the office. You could think about that in a home. Um, in a home, there might be uh, a thermostat sensor that you have, and, uh, that, and the power company might say, hey, I'll give you a price break if you put these sensors on your uh, lights so that we can determine when the lights are on and off and uh, how, how we can help you monetize the energy in your home. So the power company has installed those sensors. Well, what now if a uh, medical company came in and said, oh, okay, well, now that I'm in your home and uh, I see you have an injury, well, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to put a device in your home so you can communicate with us. But now we notice that there are other sensors in your home. May we connect to those? Because now the medical company can start looking at the lights in your home. If the only light in your home that's going on and off on a regular basis is in your bedroom and the living room light never turns on, that's an indicator that you might not be healthy, that you're, not, that you're staying in bed. They want to know that. They want you to know that. They want your loved ones to know that in terms of perhaps like an elder care situation. So again, it's new gateways can come in and they can take advantage of those sensors in the home, in the office, in the car. And it's going to be the ability to, again, um, find a way to be able to connect and monetize new opportunities off of those sensors. I think it's a wonderful world. Let's talk just a little bit about privacy, ownership, and security, um, and specifically how the Intel product is providing those services, which is probably the starting point from a consumer point of view, is what are the risks of the era of the Internet of Things? So all... Uh... One of my favorite things to say is that technology is emotionless. Uh, technology is agnostic. It's how it's used uh, that creates the emotion and that creates the angst. And uh, so when I look at security and privacy and other things like that, the first thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that the devices can be secured, the devices can be anonymized uh, in, in ways that are necessary to make people feel comfortable. Um, Intel is a provider of technology, and what we will do is we will provide the technologies to um, best secure and privatize uh, your information. So, uh, for instance, there's a great technology done by our Intel security arm called whitelisting. What that enables you to do is you can load that software on a device, and, and it will look at all the rest of the software and say, this software is allowed, and therefore I will boot. If somebody puts a malicious virus into that environment, the whitelist will actually see it say, this is not a recognized item and it will alert or it will not boot or it will find some way to be able to protect your information. So that would be just one example of a baseline technology that we would provide in order to try and make the industry better. We'll provide a lot of these technologies, whitelisting, um, virus protection, uh, encryption, uh, perhaps things like data compression and, uh, and other things that will uh, make it easier to transmit information. And then we'll provide those to the industry, we'll give some toolkits so that they can be used, and then we'll allow the industry to innovate around it. So to a large degree, it's really ensuring that at the base hardware level, you're as secure as possible. You're never totally secure, but you're as secure as possible. And from there, people will innovate and they will ensure that security and privacy is enabled in the environment. From a startup perspective, how does one begin to engage with your data service product? So uh, the nicest thing about uh, Intel is, again, you know, we're pretty much a technology provider and we're everywhere. So we power the cloud. Uh, we power Amazon. We power Google. We power uh, IBM software. And so 
when you look at it, uh, the way that you interact with uh, Intel technology is you use technology. Uh, a lot of those radio products and a lot of the radio protocols and other things were actually uh, protocols that were first implemented and driven to volume on things like the PC. Uh, certainly they've taken a life of their own and there's new technologies that are out there, but it's really uh, devices uh, that, uh, the, the grandfather devices you would almost think, the PCs that have been around for a long time, the laptops that really invented uh, mobility and mobile communication. That's been taken well beyond uh, anybody's imagination with uh, smartphones and with tablets, uh, now these uh, new smart devices that are coming in. All of these, though, use protocols and, uh, and technologies uh, that you know, are extensions of the things that were originally created. Um, if you look at the world, um, you know, at least to my mind, you know, Intel architecture, Microsoft Windows, Ethernet, SQL, there's really just a small handful of technologies that everybody knows how to use and that are really the computing standards in the industry. And there's certainly new ones that are coming up every day. But a lot of those devices that are going to communicate, they're going to use Ethernet protocols to be able to uh, communicate. And that Ethernet protocol is available at the device and it goes all the way back to the data center in a packet that everybody understands. So the easiest way to be able to interact in an Intel environment with the cloud is to basically just use the technologies and the protocols that are out there, extend them and innovate on them, and uh, go do wonderful things. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate you taking some time to speak with the silent intelligence. Absolutely, my pleasure. Have a great day.